Uh, so our next comedian, by the way, uh, is responsible for a large contingency of this audience. So. Uh, Louis C.K. Uh, just kidding. Uh, he's been a sports writer for more than 30 years. Uh, much of that time was spent covering the NHL and the Maple Leafs. Yeah. Uh, so he desperately needs a few laughs. Please welcome David Schultz. First time I ever joked on stage in the middle of the show, I wasn't tackled by a bouncer. <laughs> in uh, 35 years as a sports writer, the one line I get more than any other is, wow, you get paid to watch the Toronto Maple Leafs. That must be so cool. I say, yeah, cool. It's like Mike Tyson's sparring partners get paid to be punched in the head three times. <laughs> But, I don't know, when it comes to the Leafs, I just don't get their name. I mean, forget no cup win since 1965. These guys have been a grammar error since 1927. <laughs> I mean, aren't team names supposed to represent aggression and strength, you know, and victory? Buccaneers, Warriors, and Hawks. So, where are the little things that fall out of trees fit in? <laughs> But not that they're the only sinners. There's the Utah Jazz. Okay, I get it, I get it. They moved from New Orleans. But, you know, Utah and Jazz. You ever been to a jazz club in Utah? I mean, we're talking Kenny G tribute bands. No booze. But most of all, most important of all, no dancing. So, but I think what the least should do is take the same approach as the Olympics. Like, nobody ever loses in the Olympics, right? Nobody loses the gold medal. You win the silver. And the media eats this crap whole. Like all those other guys in the 100 meters, they didn't lose the gold medal at Usain Bolt. Oh no, somebody won the silver. And Justin Gatlin, who finished third, he won the bronze. What the media doesn't tell you is by the time Gatlin crossed the finish line, Bolt was on his third beer. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, I've, I've taken the Olympic approach to my own life, yes, in my house. <laughs> Somebody over here might have said earlier. <laughs> Every couple days at my house, I win the silver medal. <laughs> After 30 years, I've got almost as many silvers as the leaves. <laughs> I still remember my first one. It was very early in our relationship. I was like, oh, do I really have to come shopping with you? Yes. Okay. It's not like my wife needs me during the actual shopping. I'm like a Stephen Harper cabinet minister. <laughs> I perform no useful function. <laughs> but I'm, I'm there for one thing, that's the holdest spot in the checkout line. <laughs> but that's alright, that's alright. Over the years, I've got to spend a lot of time looking at the magazines, the newspapers, you know, there, and all the stories in them. And I've learned some things. One is that after every election, the same story appears. Every time a prime minister loses, it has to vacate 24 Sussex, the official residence, to the new guy. The same story comes up. <coughs> Millions of dollars of renovations are needed to bring 24 Sussex up to a livable condition for the new guy. Apparently all our prime ministers are the tenants from hell. <laughs> I mean, didn't anybody see the warning signs? The couch, the fridge on the porch. <laughs> the four car wrecks on the front lawn. And now, thanks to Harper, who I guess is the ultimate redneck, they're talking about actually knocking the thing down. Yeah, and building a new one for a guy who actually grew up there. <laughs> Justin, you can have the new house, 
but no in-law suite for mom. We already know what happens when she gets the party. Four more car wrecks on the front lawn. Something else I, I wonder about while I'm standing in the checkout line is Cosmo Magazine. <laughs> Do you ever notice that every Cosmo issue is exactly the same? <laughs> you know, let's make people, it, it's why I wonder that you know their readers aren't the stupidest people on the planet. <laughs> you know, every issue, upper left corner, right beside the head of that really hot woman with the amazing cleavage, is the same headline for sex tips. <laughs> every issue, how to drive them wild. <laughs> Don't any of these women remember these tips from month to month? <laughs> then again, they might get the same amount of practice as I do. <laughs> It always brings me to the biggest unanswered question of all. Why is it when porno actresses are having sex, they never take their shoes off? Okay, I understand why that didn't go so good. But all you guys out there who did laugh, I want to thank you. I know how hard it is. You're looking across the table going, should I or should I? And the rest of you guys who didn't laugh, Congratulations on your latest silver medal. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody.